It is taught in the Quran, a big and small. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life, a complete way. Welcome to this episode of Tell Us About Islam. Tell Us About Islam. I'm your host, Yusuf Festus, and we're going to be talking about some of the most important things about Islam today, where we came from, what it's all about, why we're here, and so much more. And to help me do that, we have special guests with us. First, on my right, we have Fatima. Fatima, how old are you? Nine. Nine years old. Okay, and who is this? Zia. Zia. How old are you? Eleven. Eleven years old. Bilal, tell us how old you are. Ten. Ten years old? Yes. Oh. And this is Tabish. Tabish, how old are you? Nine years old. Nine years old. And all of them come from the same school. It's called the Islamic International School, right? Yes. Ah. But we want to get started today. Let's get right into it. What would be the first question we should ask? Where did everything come from? Ah, excellent question. Where did everything come from? We need to think about that, don't we? We look around us, we see mountains and trees and rivers and flowers, and we see people. We see so many things. Where did it come from? The Quran tells us that Allah created everything out of nothing. He just said, be, and it is, kun, fire kun, and everything happened. That's by Allah's command. This is something that we know from early, early, early revelation that came. And it's the same in the Quran. Allah says, be, and it is. And Allah created the heavens. He created the earth. He created everything in between. And he did so in seven periods of time. He says in the Quran, He tells us that he created everything in these seven periods of time. We say seven days, you know? Like you say, back in my day, or that'll be the day. So day actually means period of time here. Then it says that Allah rose above his throne. Some of the things that Allah created, though, that maybe you don't see, well, angels, for instance. Tell us about angels. Well, right, now that you brought it up. Angels are made out of light. Did you know that? Angels are made out of light. That's why you can't see them. You can see what the light reflects off of, but actually, we don't see light. Light travels through darkness until it hits something. And when it hits it, then you can see it. And that's why in outer space, it looks black. Even though there's a lot of light, but the light's moving in the outer space, but you don't see it. And guess what? That's what angels are made out of. They are made out of light. Then what happened? Oh, well. Then the next thing that happened after Allah created the angels, he created them to do everything so that Allah doesn't come in the creation and do things. He orders the angels to do it. When Allah wants something done, he can just say, be, and it is. But when he wants things to move a certain way, this and that, he lets angels do it. When a leaf falls from a tree, Allah lets an angel carry it down. Is that nice? Yes. Everything that happens is by Allah's command. Some things he just says be and it is, but some things he wants it to take time. So he's not the one who just comes and sits there and tries to do all this stuff, because that would be like his creation. And Allah is not like his creation, as we've discovered in some of our other programs. But that's how Allah uses angels, to do whatever he wants. But all the angels worship Allah. They never do anything except worship Allah. After Allah created angels, he created another kind of being. 
He created another creation in a way like angels, but not like angels, and they're called the jinn. Are jinn like people? Are jinn like people? Yes and no. They're like angels, but not exactly. Angels can see and hear. Angels can talk. Angels can move around. But angels have no choice. They have to do only what Allah said. So they're perfect. And really, that's what we say. Somebody is like an angel. It means they do what Allah wants them to do. But a jinn, Allah created the jinn and made them not from light. He made them out of a fire. But it's a fire you can't see because there's no smoke. But you can feel it. Jinn are made out of fire. And jinn have a choice. This is a big, big difference. The jinn have a choice. And in these choices, they can decide if they want to do what Allah wants them to do or not. If Allah wants them to do something, they can choose not to do it. And that's the difference between the angels and the jinn. That what they're made out of is one thing. But the big difference is that all of the creation has to do what Allah wants it to but not the jinn. Jinn don't have to. They can do what they want to do, or try to anyway, but this will be a problem, of course, if they don't do what Allah wants. And this will help us to understand a little bit about the jinn. Can jinn talk to people? Well, in a way, yes. Not exactly like you and I talk, because if I'm talking, everybody here can hear me. But when the jinn talk to somebody, well, only maybe one or two people might hear them, or maybe nobody will even hear them, because they kind of like talk to your ear inside your head in a way. They kind of whisper inside your heart. Allah mentioned this in the Quran, how they wiswas. Have you heard about that? It's the last surah of the Quran. What's the name of the last surah? Anybody? Huh? Anna? Yeah. Do you know how it goes? Yes. Can you recite it for me? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Kuna a'uzu bi rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas, min sharri al-waswas al-qan nas, al-lazi waswisu fi sudur al-nas, hi min al-jinnati wal-nas. MashaAllah. You did that from memory, didn't you? Wow. Do you know that one too? Yes. You do too? Yes. And you also? Yes. Well, we all know it. It's exactly the same way, yeah. Now, this that you recited means, say, I seek refuge with the Lord of man, huh? with the king, the Malik. How is it? Kul a'udhu bi rabb, the Lord, Malik, and then Ilah, the God of mankind. From what? From the evil whisperer who whispers in the suter and nas, uh, the chest of mankind, huh? wiswas. Because this, when he whispers, it is something that goes in a person's brain and they start thinking what he wants them to think. And some people say, oh, I have an evil side to me or I have my bad side. Or, no, it's this jinn that's whispering to them. And that's why we seek refuge with Allah from this wiswas. Yeah. How are we different? Well, one of the things where we're different from those guys is that when we speak, everybody hears us. And we're not made out of the same thing either. Where angels are made out of, what did we say they're made out of? Angels are made out of? Fire. Light, yeah. And the jinn are made out of uh, fire. 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 fire with no smoke. And the human beings, though, are made out of clay. clay. We're actually made from the very dirt that we walk on, aren't we? Have you ever thought about that? We're made out of the dirt that we walk on. That's kind of weird. Have you ever thought about this? As a matter of fact, there's an expression that said, we came from the dust, we go back to the dust. But in Islam, we say we came from Allah and we go back to Allah. So the body came from the dust, but the spirit inside of us came from Allah. Allah. We say, Inna lillahi 
وإن عليه راجعون. From Allah we came and back to Allah is our return. Can they see us? Well, the jinn see us, but we don't see them. The jinn can see us. There's no problem for them to see us, but we don't see them. And less, unless Allah makes it so we can see them. Because sometimes we might see an angel, sometimes we might see a jinn, but that's because Allah let it happen like that. Tell us about us. Tell us about us. Ooh, okay, well, we said the human beings are created from dirt, from clay. We're the last of the creation. After all of the creation was made, after the angels and after the jinn, and he said about it in the Quran, La khara khalaqno insanati asani taqweem. He said that verily I have created the human being in the best, best form, the best shape, from the best mold, taqweem. Where do we come from? Well, we come from Allah. Allah created us, but we're not made out of Allah. And Allah puts us, our spirit, inside of our bodies. And when Allah does that, that's when things begin to start for us. And when we come back, I want to take a break. When we come back, I want you to remind me of that question. We're going to pick up with that. Now, you're watching Telex about Islam, and we've got a lot more coming up right here, so don't you go away. Stay right where you are. We're back from our break. You're watching Tell Us About Islam. I'm Yusuf Estes, our guest with us today. Fatima, Zia, Bilal, Tabish all from the same school, the Islamic International School. And what we've been talking about is the very beginning, where everything came from, how it all got started. According to Islam, from the Quran, the teachings of Islam, and we we're discovering a lot of things. And before we went to the break, we had a very good question. What was that question? Where did we come from? Yeah, where did we come from? And in fact, we all came from the clay that Allah order to become human being. Now, do you remember when I told you about the jinn and he was with the angels worshiping Allah? Ah, he was also big. But this was even bigger. And he saw it and he went inside of it and he looked around in it and he came out of it and he said, if Allah ordered me to bow down because of this thing, I would never do it. Mm. Well, sure enough, Allah created it and then caused the head to be on it and he gave it life. And when he gave it life, it could breathe. And the first thing that happened, Allah blew life into him through his nostril, through the nose. And when he did, it made him sneeze. He went, achoo. And when he sneezed like that, he said, Alhamdulillah, the praise to Allah. So that was the very first words ever spoken by the first man. The first man's name was Adam. Who was Adam? Who was Adam? Well, Adam was the father of all of us. He is the very first one created as a human being. Like the jinn, you know, the jinn had choices. They could do something or not do it. The angels had no choices. But the jinn, they could be good or they could be bad. And the same is true for Adam. Adam could make choices. He could do what Allah wants him to do or not. It's up to him. He had choices. Who was his wife? Ah, how did you figure out he had a wife? MashaAllah. Well, he, he did. He had a wife, but where did he get a wife? After all, he was the first creation of a human being. Where would he go get a wife? Well, let's put it like this. He didn't go on the internet looking for a wife, that's for sure. 
what happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him to be like in a sleep. Then he removed a bone from him, from his chest, called a rib bone, you know, the curved bone. And then Allah made this bone come to life, just like he made everything else happen. Kun fayakun. And that bone became a woman. And the woman was his wife. And her name was what? Do you know? Hawa. Her name was Hawa. Where did she come from? Well, she came actually from the bone. And Allah put life into it, just like he did Adam. And then she was his mate. And they lived together in the paradise, together, and worshipping Allah, happy with Allah. They had everything. They had rivers of milk, honey. They had beautiful flowers. They had all the things. Now, while they were there, everything was going along pretty good. But they didn't know that they had an enemy. They had a big enemy. Can you guess who the enemy was? The enemy was who? The very jinn that was in the beginning with the angels who was in trouble with Allah now. You know why? Because when Allah created Adam, he ordered all the angels bow down. And all the angels bowed down, but not this guy. Because he was a jinn, he could choose. And he chose not, not to bow down. And when he did that, he became of those rejected. That's when he became known as a shaitan, Satan, the devil. His name in Arabic is Iblis. That's his name, Iblis. Now, he was their enemy, and they didn't realize that. They didn't know. Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, gave an order now to Adam and Eve. Only one thing. He said, all of the things in the Jannah are for you. Everything is for you. Have all you want to eat and drink, enjoy, have a good time, whatever you want to do. And they did. He said, but one thing. Don't eat the fruit of that tree. Which tree? I don't know. But it was a big tree. It was a real tree. What happened next? Well, they left it alone for a long time. They didn't bother it. Then what happened? Well, the devil went in there, and when he got in there, he started to make a problem. How? Wiswas. Remember, we talked about wiswas. When the devil talks to you, he started talking to Adam. You know, Adam, if you ate something from that tree, you wouldn't die. Come on, man. It would be all right. Go ahead. Take it. Take a bite. Just, you know, go ahead. Something like that. Well, Adam, he thought about it. And then the devil is talking to Howard, telling her, go ahead. Eat from that tree. It won't hurt you. You know, make you live forever. He told him all kinds of stuff. Finally, they ate. They ate from the tree. They ate the fruit, even though they were ordered by Allah, don't eat it. But they forgot. They totally forgot and just ate it anyway. Whoops. That's a problem now. They disobeyed. By the way, shall I tell you something? The word for human being in Arabic is Ins. You know that? Ins? Like insan? Human beings. Ins. Mm. A lot of things that we know from the Quran in the Arabic language help us to better understand how it all fits together. When you try to translate the stories like I'm doing now, you will miss a lot of points. You will miss a lot of understanding. And the reason is because English is not like Arabic. Only Arabic is like Arabic. If you really want to know what happened, if you really want to know how to understand it, the first thing to do is learn from the Arabic of the Quran. The more that we study, the more that we learn, the more we can get a benefit from it. What should we do? Well, the first thing to do is to find a good teacher, a good Arabic teacher who knows the real Arabic or classical Arabic or Fusha. 
And then he will sit with you and he will teach you and then help you learn the Quran. But Arabic needs to be first. It's not difficult. In fact, we put a whole entire introduction to Arabic on the internet and let people learn from it. And some of the first people that wanted to use it were not even Muslim. In fact, they were in Washington, D.C. And they wanted to spy on the Muslims that speak Arabic. So they used our course. We said, go ahead. <laughs> we want you to, because we want you to know real Arabic, and we want you to know the Quran, what Islam really teaches. So that's the first thing. Get the Arabic, then start to learn the Quran. Don't just say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and then say, what does it mean? Because if you do that, you're going to translate it right away. What does Ba mean? Bismillah. What does Ba mean? Well, it is the first letter. Well, that's the second letter if you go by Alif Ba. But Ba by itself means just the letter. But when you say Bismi, do you know what it means? Do you know what's Bismi? Like Bismillah? In the name of. In the name of Allah? Well, that'd be Bism. Bism. Bismi. In the name. Yeah, in the name. Except that. If you mean in, you would say fis, Mila. Fis, fi. Because fi is in. But bi is with. Billah means with Allah. Fillah means in Allah. But see, that's the problem. When you're trying to translate to English, it doesn't work good, does it? Too difficult. This is why I keep saying it's better to learn the Arabic. And then when you say it in Arabic, you understand it. It means it like this. And you don't have to worry about what is English or Hindi or Urdu or any of the other languages. Just get it in the Arabic. And the more you spend with the Arabic, the easier it will become for you. Now, probably you've already memorized, uh, I think, Fatima, you've memorized some of the Quran in Arabic, right? And I think also you did too, didn't you? Yes. Okay. How about you, Blah? You memorized some of it? Okay. And Tavish? I also memorized Yeah. Now, when you memorized it in Arabic, did they teach you the meaning or just teach you to memorize it? With meaning. With meaning? Oh, this is very good. That's a good school. Because the stories that I just told you just now, the things that we explained, are in the very first chapter of the Quran. In fact, if you go to chapter 2, chapter 2 is the big first chapter after Fatiha, you'll find in verse 30 and 31 the introduction to what I'm saying. How, what is it, when Allah said, I'm about to create a ruler on the earth, a vice generate or khilafatun fil earth. What the angel said next was a puzzle. They said, oh, will you create one who will do mischief and shed blood while we are worshiping you and praising you? How did they know about the shedding blood? How did they know? They're angels. They don't know anything. How they knew? Because they had watched what the jinn did. They already knew from what they'd seen. So that's why Allah said, Verily I know what you don't know. And from there the story begins and continues. But we've run out of time, so we'll have to continue this in another episode of Tell Us About Islam. Until then, we greet you and give you farewell with peace. Assalamu alaikum. Do you know what Islam is? It's a way of life for all. It is taught in the Quran for big and small. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Life, a way of life is